Um, so let's get back to Revelation chapter 9. I gotta find it again. Yes. It says trumpet six. It says the fifth trumpet. Oh, shoot. Does it all say that on all of them? Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, I've been going so fast through these things. Yes, that was. That's okay. number six under the bolt. I want to correct on nine. Can I borrow that? I am so sorry. Okay, everybody. Here's a mistake. It says trumpet number six on top, and we I've got the correct um, scripture reference nine thirteen through twenty one, but I I forgot to to change over. Okay. The fifth to the sixth. So just cross that out and put six in there. Sorry. That's about that. why I originally thought I had the right one. Yeah. What are you looking at here? Right here. No worries. Oh, oh thanks. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. Thank you for seeing that. See, on my notes, I had it right, and on that, I had it wrong. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Did everybody understand that? Get that? Yes. Yeah. Like I say, that's why I thought I had the right one because I go, what's up, kid? Oh, yeah, you're like, Wait, I'm yeah, got it. Okay, got it. Okay, great. Uh, let's get back to then the rest of the chapter. Let's read it. Okay. Then the sixth, I'm in verse 13. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them, and thus I saw the horses of the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow, and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. And by these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouths and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents having heads, and with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immoralities or their thefts. All right, that's packed. And I got about a half hour to get through this. So let's go. Okay. Six, we know is the number of man and beast because they were both created on the sixth day. And it's the Six days are allotted to man from the Lord, which is 6,000 6, years, okay? We also are told that a man becomes a beast in Revelation, and his number is 666, okay? But anyways, there was a voice from the four horns of the golden altar. And we know what this is. We know this is, there's the Holy of Holies. There's the altar it's talking about, okay? It's not this altar. This is the brazen altar. This deals with sin. This is the incense, right? Do you remember that? Yes. Okay, good. And there's four horns on, around, on the crown of that thing. Okay, good. Um, so um, the brazen altar deals with sinners, okay, and the cleansing of sin by sacrifice blood. The golden altar of incense, that has to do with believers. That has to do with saints and all of their prayers that go before God. And these four horns speak of the earth and the worldwide effect, okay? Because you've got to remember that the blood was sprinkled on the altar for sin, on the brazen altar, was taken in to that uh, altar of incense for, uh, to, to, to make atonement for sins of ignorance. Not for um, intentional sin. Remember that. The Old Testament has no um, remedy for living in intentional sin. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, don't even, I can't go there. Uh huh. So anyways, all right. So the blood from the brazen altar was taken into the holy place, sprinkled on the horns of the altar. So that blood spoke to God on behalf of the nation of Israel. That altar ministered grace and mercy and intercession. But now these horns... Of course, it's in the heavenly sanctuary. Now, oh, they're crying out for something different, judgment. They're not crying out for mercy. It's not crying out for pardon. Mm -hmm. The sins against the altar 
cause the horns to just finally cry out to God, bring judgment, bring judgment. And so the horns touched by blood speak symbolically. There's power in the blood from the church worldwide because this is where the saints are praying. Please bring judgment upon this. See, blood has a voice. Abel's blood cry. Jesus' blood at the moment, it cries out for mercy, but that's coming to an end. You know, so the blood of the martyrs, the souls under the altar, they have a voice and it's crying out to God for what? Right now, even at this moment, it's crying out for vengeance, right? Are, are you going to avenge our blood? We were taken innocently. This wasn't right. Our life was shortened. So here, the horns of the altar have a voice and it's a very terrible time. Now, let's talk about horns on an animal. They're for protection and power and honor. Think about a ram. It had horns. And a ram was used in atonement in the sacrifice and shedding of its blood. What did they do with the horns? Well, the horn was reserved for God. And what did God use the ram's horn? To speak to Israel. That's how he spoke to them. So you have to realize that a horn was provided through sacrifice. A, a ram had to give, its, give up its life in order to have the voice of God speak to the people. See, horns are very powerful. So this ram's horn, they were used in marching around Jericho in order to give the blast on Judgment Day. That came from a sacrificed ram, you know. Now, here's something else, and I gave you the scripture. Look it up later. But in Old Testament Israel, a person could run to the altar and take hold of its horns and cry for mercy. Please don't kill me. Please don't give me mercy. Now, those same horns could mean death to some, but it could also mean life to others and mercy. And I gave you in your scriptures there two examples in 1 Kings of one going to grabbing onto the horns and crying for mercy and receiving it, and another one going and grabbing onto those horns and crying for mercy, and guess what? He wouldn't let go, and no mercy was given. Boom, killed. I mean, those are the things. The horns, that's on the... The These horns, now this is, this is remember, only a shadow. We, we understand it because it's the language of creation. But these horns in Revelation is in heaven. This is the, the, the prayers that are going up before God. But we know that it's about this piece of furniture that is in heaven. But you were saying uh, in, the, in the past. They could run to the altar. They could. They could yeah, run they to could the so altar and grab onto them. I didn't know they could go into the, go the, into the altar. Yeah, no, well, they would, gra uh, they would grab the altar in the in the front on the horns, and they oh, would the, grab onto that altar? and beg for mercy. The exactly. Because the horns yeah. are, yeah, the horns represent power. There's power in the blood. Please, okay. mercy, mercy. Read about it. Go back and read it. I wonder that. who is granted, why and who would be granted mercy and who wouldn't. Well, read the Kings, and you'll get a great story okay. there. Okay. Um, all right, now it's important to keep in mind that there are always two divisions of mankind in Revelation. Remember, there's the church or the people of God who are being preserved through these trumpet judgments. And then there are the ungodly who are willfully unrepentant. Now let's talk about the voice with the command. So a voice from the four horns in heaven, right, they speak to the angel who is sounding the sixth trumpet saying, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. These four angels bound at the river Euphrates are evil angels. Why do I know that? Because good, holy, and elect angels are not bound. Only evil are bound, okay? And a study of scripture shows that. There are some angels that are bound. Some are in the prison of Tartarus. You can refer to our last lesson. Many angels are with Satan in the heavenly realm right now going around, okay? And some angels like these four will be loosed in judgment on godless mankind. They will be used to judge man, okay? And so uh, God has permitted angels to destroy and judge man in history. I believe I've given you those uh, examples. Did I give you uh, 2 Kings 19? One angel killed thousands of Assyrians just in one night. What about God? He used an angel to smite Herod for self-deification. And evil angels troubled Egypt in the midnight hour. So it will be when these four are released. They are evidently fallen, powerful, and evil. And God lets loose under this sixth trumpet evil angels on evil man. And they will kill a great number of people. Now, let's talk about the river Euphrates, letter B. There's much scriptural significance regarding this river. It was one of the rivers that runs through the Garden of Eden, where sin entered by Satan. It's the place of the first murder of Abel. Euphrates seems to be the first place where Satan placed his throne. 
He's always moving his throne around the earth, okay? One point it was at Pergamos and so forth, but this probably was his first enthronement where the Tower of Babel was built, okay? It was also the place of the first great apostasy on earth under rebel Nimrod. And in Babylon, where this river flowed, Judah was held, the house of Judah, for 70 years. And we know that Babylon reached its height under Daniel, who witnessed her fall to the Medo-Persians, right? Mm -hmm. Babylon, um, it was in Babylon that the times of the Gentiles began relative to the house of Judah. It has to do with that um, uh, prophecy um, uh, of Daniel chapter 9. And listen to this, the river Euphrates is mentioned not only under the sixth trumpet, but also under the sixth bowl. And eventually, in Re Revelations, the river will dry up for the way of kings of the east to pass over. This river is in modern day Iran and Iraq, the nations in that area that pertain to the river Euphrates and Tigris, okay? We will see further as we get into Revelation that Babylon will come into great prominence in the last days, okay? Now, these four angels are prepared. Isn't that interesting, the word? They're prepared to kill a third of mankind. They, their evil is against God. The, the four angels bound for their evil against God are prepared angels and prepared for a specific work of judgment on man. The fact that John put down the hour, the day, the month, and the year are mentioned emphasizes that there is a specific year, month, day, and hour in which that they are set to be loose to do their destructive worldwide work. And they were released to kill one third of mankind. And this is repeated in verses 15 and 18. One third of man is going to be killed by these powerful angels, these death angels. And as we have learned, God has four leaders of the redeemed host, four living ones. Satan also has four leaders of the fallen host, these here. They had been prepared for this exact moment. He has them bound. Some are bound in Tartarus, but apparently four of them got bound right at the river Euphrates. And think about it, they've been bound there ever since, waiting for this very day that's coming very soon. They're going to be let loose, they're going to torment and kill before they themselves will be eternally tormented in the lake of fire. And it will take place for a certain period of time. What is the... Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, are the redeemed protected from this? Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. Always. There are two... Okay, let's do it again. Look at... This is, I promise you, there are two groups of people in Revelation. There are God's people, and there are the unredeemed or Satan's people. And he's put a difference to both of them. Okay. And God knows who belongs to him. Satan knows who belongs to him and them. Okay? okay? Always. All right, now the time element is just before the ushering in of the great tribulation period of three and a half years. It's just before the sounding of the seventh trumpet, which is also the third woe. Okay, so what's the fifth trumpet? The first woe, demon locusts. The sixth trumpet, what we're in right now, is the second woe, and it's these four evil angels that are going to kill a third of man. Okay, the Holy Spirit restrains evil until a certain time. Now, because of the unrestrained wickedness in man, divine judgment must come. God's holiness, his righteousness, and his justice are challenged when such evil remains unpunished. He has been patient. Think of the earth's population now, even after the third of people judged under the seals. Remember the seals? Remember the fourth horseman, the pale horseman? Under that, a fourth of the earth is touched with death. And remember, that the fourth horseman was released long ago. Mm -hmm. He's been running through the earth this whole time, right? Under here, under this trumpet, a third of the earth's population is killed. Untold millions will die in these judgments, for an end of all flesh comes before God. And Isaiah says he will destroy the sinners out of the land. 200 million horsemen is the number of the army. John says, I heard the number. <coughs> and it will be seen in their description that these horsemen are demonic horsemen, just like the locusts were demonic. And it would be difficult to find 200 million literal horses in the world. The language describing them is symbolic language, um, yet very real spirit beings, and they have the ability to kill. 
Now remember, the Lord Jesus Christ has his armies of saints riding on white horses, returning with him at his coming. So again, here's Satan and his counterfeit armies, his cavalries of hell, and these four angels, and they're in control of this army. And it's worldwide destruction and death. And so he gives an eightfold description, okay? And uh, let me, can I see on yours really quick? Where are we? Yeah, right, the eightfold description right there. I think that's, did I give you, I'm sure I did. Yep, okay, good, let's do that really quick. We can go through that, okay? Number one, their number is 200 million. Number two, their appearance is as horses. The previous woe was locusts. Now they're horses and their spirit, not flesh. Their riders are those who sat on them were controlling them. Their breastplates. Oh, so they also have armor on. Isn't that interesting? Fiery red, hyacinth blue, sulfur yellow. The demon locusts had breastplates of iron. Now note the three colors. It's the defensive armor of hell. It's the color of fire and brimstone. They're the elements of hell's torments. Number five, their heads, the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. So imagine a horse with a lion's head. The demon locusts had teeth like lion's teeth. So imagine a, gra you know, a locust with lion's teeth and Satan is like a roaring lion, right? So this is now, John is getting, it's getting more intense and John is now giving us a description in, excuse me, in full color. And number six, out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. Brimstone being sulfur, very bad breath. It's stifling and suffocating brimstone, smoke, and fire. Those, again, are hell's elements. And the fire added makes it all the more tormenting. And number seven, they're killing. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed. A third of man is destroyed by these hellish things, fire, smoke and brimstone now modern weapons fit this description mm -hmm. for sure i'm thinking maybe possibly because it's right before the three and a half years it, it could possibly be world war three very easily with the modern weaponry that we have we're, we're running fast toward that world war three as you know uh, battle of gog and magog but anyways we'll have to wait and see um uh, okay, and then number eight, their tails. Power is in their mouth and in their tails. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And these have death-dealing mouths, which come out of their mouths and defiles, destroys, and kills. Of course, again, satanic armies always come with deception, lies, delusion, all that is corrupt and false and impure. These are all doctrines of devils. And the power is also in their tails, and their tails are like serpents, but they have heads, and with these, their tails hurt men it's remember this i know you know this in the gospel it's with the tail that the serpent draws the stars of heaven and casts them to the earth the tail causes the great apostasy first it's the head with wrong delusions and then a fall whoosh get them right out it's a falling away a great apostasy the serpent poison intelligent power at work hurting and harming those who do not have the seal of god in their foreheads and the demon locusts had tails like scorpions. Here the tails are like serpent heads. Satanic heads and minds are symbolized. That's craftiness and deceit and guile. That old serpent, the devil. <coughs> Subtlety, cruelty, deceitfulness, falsehood, mis uh, mischief are the characteristics of these deadly poisonous serpent tails. But think about the news today. Look at the world today. Can you believe how many people believe some of the lies? Oh and mom and I were talking. She goes, how can they believe? This is what we're talking about. This is that spirit already at work. And they really do. They look at you. No, you know, you're crazy. They're, they believe it. Mind it's mind-boggling to really us is. because we yeah. can see yeah you know we can see a difference it's what and jesus told nicodemus we can see that and they're like what are you talking yeah about? it's it's yeah. crazy but, but, see and that is like, it's just so real it's so real yeah it's just like that commercial they've been showing us on super bowl yeah yeah, oh, yeah exactly yeah. that's that like thing, I, know. I looked around at some of the people that, that were in the sanctuary yeah we were watching the game it was a sober bowl and like, like they, it's an act of Jesus. Yeah, like, no, that's it. No, exactly. They don't, see they don't get it, and they don't know their word. They, they said don't they don't know the word. And I see, know. it's the subtle, see, the, I'm telling you this, I know you laugh at me about this, but the subtlety of this love message, 
It's doctrine of devils. It's yeah. doctrine of demons is what this thing is. And it is going to grab people, and it's going to be a great falling away. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, yeah, that's the scary part. Yeah. It is brilliant. And and social media will play a heavy part. Oh, yeah. Because, oh, yeah. Well, and AI, and that's what I was going to say on this, because you were saying that, um, you know, there's this, this is not literal horses and stuff like that, but it could be that whole AI thing, you know. Yeah, whole, oh, for sure. You know, we, we think of. You know, I believe it's all of that. And all that, you know. But all of that. I believe it is I absolutely do. all of that. And here's the thing. What we are seeing in the first woe and the second woe, the fifth and the sixth trumpet, combining of all of these things, it's intensifying. It's really getting bad. It's really intensifying. I saw a guy on TV and he said, I'm an atheist. I'm going to burn in hell forever or something like that. I'm not afraid to burn in hell forever. Oh, wow. Jesus just looked at me. Yeah, there's, there's like... But he's an atheist. That doesn't make sense, does it? Wow. Yeah. So he believes there is a hell, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. In other words, I refuse to repent. Mm -hmm. I refuse. And that's yeah. exactly what that is. I'd rather die. I would yeah. rather mm -hmm. commit suicide mm -hmm. or go forever eternally and be in hell. And the unsad thing is the minute they're there, their eyes will be opened. It'll be like the oh. friend, the friend, the boyfriend. Yes. The, friend. Yeah. I, I, I'll never forget that story. I know. That was incredible. That was incredible. So number nine, their harm. Under this trumpet, of course, people die. This satanic army kills. Remember, the sealed ones are not to be heard in these trumpet judgments. The true church is protected by reason of the seal of God remaining in the truth. Demon forces know those who have the seal, and they know those who do not. Now, I gave you a chart just to help you do a quick you know, you could mark maybe on the front page of your lesson that the chart's on page six to compare the fifth and sixth trumpet, which is, I should have put in there, the first and second wall. Okay, let's go on to letter E, the unrepentant. One third of man is killed, but two thirds of man refuse to repent. Can you believe that? Right, the judgments of God do not always bring man to repentance, says Proverbs 27. Man's conscience becomes seared when he refuses to respond to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to note this is the first time the word repent is used in the book of Revelation since the seven letters to the churches. And what it's doing is showcasing now an unrepentant world. Repentance is part of the gospel. God grants to all mankind a space to repent. And if man doesn't repent in that God-given space and come to faith in Christ... Then when he comes to the end of that space, then judgments fall on him. That's why it's so important that we preach the gospel of repentance. Yes. Yes. We've got to repent. Unbelief hardens the heart, and it, it tells it not to repent. So at this point, it's horrible and hopeless state of the heart and the mind of unredeemed man. It's not hopeless for us. Now the plague, F. This is the first mention of the word plague. Now, the plagues in Egypt did not bring Pharaoh or the Egyptians to repentance. You know what it did? You know what the plagues in Egypt did? It brought a hardness to their hearts. Mm -hmm. And Proverbs said that he that is often reproved and hardens his heart shall be cut off without remedy. And we're going to see the without remedy in, verse, in chapters 15 and 16 with the seven bulls. That's God's plague. The only thing which averted the plague in Israel was to be numbered with the atonement, with the ransom money, the price of blood bought for the soul. Well, the last days of this age will also reveal the final hardness of the human heart, a state of unrepentance. In other words, that space to repent will come to an end. And John the Baptist and Jesus, they came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand at the beginning of the church age. Remember, from God's point of view, that was just barely two days ago, right? We're almost right. to two days, okay? How much more significant is that call in the last days prior to Christ's second coming? They repented not. We read that. They repented not. It's the sad not. The result is that man is left open to the plagues of God. The plagues of God is the wrath of God. They're coming. This isn't even it yet. Now, I'm going to go really quickly, and we don't need to spend much time on this. Letter G. John lists out six major sins against God and man mentioned in the final verse about this sixth trumpet. Number one, demon worship. The world will end up in demon worship. 
Revelation 13, the world is deceived, into the worship of Antichrist, mm -hmm. which is the worship of the devil. And we have already said there's an increase all around the world. Mm -hmm. Man will not repent of these things. Mm -hmm. The devil himself tempted Jesus to worship him. And he will gain worship through demonic hosts in the last days under the sixth trumpet, unless we have the seal of God and we are in relationship. We keep in that love. Okay, number two, idolatry. Um, note the order of materials of that idolatry. There's gold and silver for the richer classes. There's brass and stone for the middle classes. And there's wood for the poor. It covers from the highest class right down to the lowest class of society. Demon worship and idolatry belong together. The final blasphemy, of course, will be with the beast and the Antichrist. But this is a picture even now at this point in time of the whole world. Okay. Um, all at that point in time will become steeped in idolatry and demon worship. Man was created to worship. He is drawn to believe in something. That's how man was created. So if he refuses to worship the true and living God, then he will turn to worship the works of his own hands, which is idolatry and the worship of the devil. Okay. Um, and the idols mentioned in this passage have uh, supposedly eyes, ears, and feet. But it's the created man who has these things. And yet he, he worships his own idols and his own materials that he made. It is so stupid. Uh, the greater worshiping the lesser. That's what it is. Man, the greater, who's carved something out, worshiping the lesser. How stupid can you be? The created worshiping a created object. See, idolatry, remember, all of the immoralities, all of the sinful behavior comes from idolatry. The two go together. But always remember, idolatry comes first. That's wrong thinking. Idolatry is wrong thinking. And that leads men to spiritual blindness, deafness, and dumbness, ending in death. Paul clearly states this in Romans chapter 1. Rejection of God leads to immorality. And immorality leads then to a reprobate mind, which is a state of unrepentance. I refuse to repent. That's where the world is at that point. It's an unrepented world. All now wrong behavior that had stemmed from wrong thinking, and so many of them because they were deceived. Ugh, that makes me bad. I'm so sad, okay? Then murders. Of course, Satan is a liar and a murderer. Cain was of that wicked one, the first murderer. Look at abortion. Look at the murderous generation that we're living in, right? Habitual murder is on the increase in our own nation. We can't believe the murders that we're seeing. Isn't it funny? Murder violates the sixth commandment, and this is the sixth trumpet. And so a spirit of hate and murder will increase under this trumpet. An angel kills a third of man. Man murders man. Then there's number four, the sorceries. That's pharmakia. That word pharmacia, in other words, pharmacy, chemist, it's drug abuse. Behind many kinds of drugs are evil spirits and powers. And the satanic power, powers behind these drugs cause people to behave satanically. It destroys their minds, their souls, their bodies. So under the sixth trumpet, there will also be not only an increase of immorality and murders, but there will be increased drug abuse. Okay? Really, like, multiplied. And then number five, sexual immorality, fornication, adultery, all manner of immorality that you can come up with. It's all inclusive. Now listen, this is not just physical immorality. This is not just fornication, adultery, homosexuality, lesbianism, incest. It's not just that. It's also spiritual adultery, spiritual fornication. That's what it is as well. So as in the days of Noah, as in the days of Lot, it will be gross immorality will abound, not only physically, but spiritually. The covenant of marriage is going to be obsolete. Intellectuals of this generation, the, our, 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 our um, universities are discouraging young people from making a commitment and getting married and having children. No, don't have children anymore. That is a doctrine of the devil. Absolutely. We're to occupy until he comes. Yes. We are to have babies. They are, these young people are to have babies, right? 
And so the sixth trumpet will be days of all perversion, a collapse of all morals, a breakdown of the institution of marriage, home, and family. And boy, we see that. Yeah. What about thefts? The Greek word there is kleptomania, and it covers all manner of dishonesty, stealing, and covetousness. It's a violation of the Eighth Commandment. Now, <clears throat> covetousness is the Tenth Commandment, which is the root of all of these sins. The sins are just the fruit, but covetousness is the root. No one would commit fornication, worship idols or demons, murder, steal, unless the root of covetousness motivated them. And so taking that which belongs to another person is the simple definition of kleptomania. And where did it begin? In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve stole the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They had no right to touch it. It wasn't theirs. So the summary, the spirit of lawlessness is revealed in an unbelievable manner under the sixth trumpet or second woe. And it's right before the great trip. What it will show will be a time of the violations of the Ten Commandments worldwide multiple, in, in a multiple way, okay? These are the most prominent sins in the last days, and it will be hell let loose on man. Man behaves like the gods he worships. Sinful man takes on the character of demons, is what he does. And the last four sins listed are a result of the first two sins. Wrong thinking leads to wrong behavior, idolatry, and immorality. When God is not first, when relationship is broken, it leads to a violation of all the commands of God. Now listen to this. It is not until, we are only in Revelation 9 right now. It is not until Revelation eleven fourteen where we read, the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe comes quickly. So it's going to last for a while. But important to note, the divine pattern of inspiration. Between the sixth and seventh seal, we had a parenthetical vision. We're now at the sixth trumpet. And before we get to the seventh trumpet, we've got a very important parenthetical visions, two of them. And these visions are given in Revelation 10 and 11. They're vital that we know about it before we understand what happens with the seventh trumpet. What is the seventh trumpet? It's the seven bowls of wrath is what it is. But we've got to know what's going to happen, okay? It's the short time, though, before the great... Uh, tribulation period and in order to get prepared we got to know what's going to happen during that time and so John gets prepared so that he prepares us and that's what we go on to okay so what time is it